Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis and welcome back to the fish room. So today we're going to be looking at the 300 gallon reefs flow or even maybe the lack of flow uh, given there has been an issue with several colonies within this main display and I'm starting to get some coral death. So I want to talk about a very common issue for people who are growing out SPS reef tanks and my suggestions and tips for uh, alleviating some of this uh, extra detritus and stress within your colonies and uh, hopefully you can prevent some coral death within your reef tank. Now, before we get started, I do want to mention that I am still running my 50% off coral sale at fishofhex.com. You can check that out. Any corals you see here in the 300 gallon reef, I do have about 600 plus corals left in my frag tank. So uh, again, at this point, I'm just going to run the sale until I empty the frag tanks, uh, however long that might take, uh, because my goal is to clean them out and then go ahead and kind of overhaul them, you know, clean the glass, clean the frag racks, then come in here and really get some trimming uh, on these colonies because a lot of these corals are starting to touch and I want to get in there and trim them up and get those new corals up on the website. So just running the sale, uh, the link uh, will be in the description or the comment section for the actual uh, discount code. And again, you just put that in at checkout, it takes 50% off and I appreciate all the support up to this point on this sale. Now, if you don't want coral, uh, you can uh, check out uh, with 3D printed items. I have about 400 different ones and I offer uh, a lot of stuff on eBay that you guys can purchase over if you're outside of the United States. And if there's something not there that's on my website, just let me know and I will add it for you. So with that out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and get into the video. Now, when it comes to the issue, let me just go ahead and show you the problem. Uh, a lot of colonies are starting to get this dead spot. You can probably see it around the, uh, excuse me, excuse me, I should have fed you before I did this. I might actually feed you to get you out of the way. So you can see there's a dead spot there. It's a detritus buildup spot. And there's a few over here um, on this colony. It's hard to see there. Then I have a couple inside this Spondones. And then in my Montes, um, I get them as well. It's actually really common inside the Montes just because it's like everything's flowing down into the center. Um, and you can see the fish have been doing some fragging for me. So what is this problem? Well, basically, when we're setting up our flow within a reef tank, um, one thing that I've done in the past and pretty much with every build is when I'm adding one inch colonies, I don't really have a ton of flow in the beginning. Uh, if the polyp extension is fine and uh, you know they're you know they're waving in the in the flow of the tank, that means they're getting oxygen and nutrients. So I really don't run a ton of flow when I have really small frags. But as the tank grows, I slowly increase that flow because you got to think about it, a one inch frag really isn't going to stop a lot of water. The water really isn't going to get slowed down by a one inch frag, right? But once that colony becomes, you know, a foot by foot, you know, 12 inches by 12 inches, uh, and depending on how dense it is, of course, a staghorn isn't going to block as much flow as, you know, a, a different coral, right? Like, like the PC rainbow, stuff like that, the more dense colonies. The point is, is when you have a smaller frag, you don't really need a lot of flow, but as the tank grows out and these corals start touching the glass and coming out of the water and they start taking up the entire escape uh, or tank in general, the flow tends to slow down a quite a bit. Um, if you guys have been here for a while, I've used a lot of different power heads in here. We had J-Bows, we've had um, uh, multiple MP40s. Right now, I currently only have four MP40s. We have the Apex Wave Pumps, which died. My J-Bows died as well, by the way. I had a couple of gyres at one point, tried a lot of power heads and really I'm kind of uh, stuck on the MP40s because they don't die on me. I mean, besides me dropping them the uh, dry side in my sump, outside of that kind of mistake, they work really well, they're easy to clean. And I have my 3D printed um, covers for these, which I have a NEM guard version as well as this other version. And um, I just pop them off, clean them or swap them out or put on another west side and they're relatively uh, easy to take care of. So that's kind of why I'm sticking with the MP40s. And with that, um, there's quite a bit of flow in this tank uh, if we're not counting the actual return pump. So there's a quite a bit of flow, but even with that, there's gonna be dead spots. Now, one of the benefits of a bare bottom tank, and a lot of you guys don't like bare bottom. If you've been here for a while, that's pretty much all I've had except for you know some of my NEM tanks and stuff like that. But bare bottom really does allow me to find these detritus pockets, these nutrient pockets. You know, we got a little starfish. I don't know if you guys can see him. He's just chilling, it's kind of dark. My old surfing star is still just chilling in there. But anyways, uh, with the bare bottom tank, I can get as much flow as I want and I can find these detritus pockets on the bottom of the tank, um, which make it easy to clean. Now, what I'm getting to point-wise here is that even though we are catching these detritus pockets with the amount of flow that we currently have in this tank and the variations of it and all that stuff, it doesn't always stop the detritus from building up inside the colonies of our corals, and that's the issue. Now, 
I figured this out back in the 125, and you guys have seen me in here with a turkey baster and maxi jet, and I'll do some overlay video possibly showing you guys kind of that process. But um, usually, if I'm doing what I need to do and I'm on top of my water changes and I'm, you know, I'm taking the time to take care of the reef tank while I'm doing these water changes, I'm usually getting in here and blowing out the inside of the colonies, getting that detritus up into the water column and down into a filter sock temporarily and removed from the uh, system. But if I forget to do it or I just don't do it for a while, like in this case, I haven't done it in probably two months. I just went in there and did it the other day and saw that I was killing off some of my coral. So I didn't even pay attention to it. Everything kind of blended in together. And then when I finally cleaned it off, I was like, oh, there's about um, a half dollar size worth of that colony that's just dead. So will it recover? Possibly in the past it has. It would just kind of grow over and, and kind of do its thing. But I've also had it happen where it turned into STN and then I lost a whole colony. So it's going to be tenant depending on the kind of the stress and overall health of your system. But um, I don't see any death yet. It's been a couple weeks and it doesn't seem to have died. It's just kind of turning dark and hopefully it will grow over. So what's the lesson to learn from this? Now, in the beginning, you don't really need a ton of flow. If your corals are getting plenty of uh, polyp extension, movement, water flow, nutrients, all that good stuff, you're fine. But as you start to grow in, you really need to start focusing on variations of flows, burst modes, uh, having power heads maybe on the back wall, which is something that I might do again uh, like I had in the past. Having that different flow, different uh, flow patterns will help get that detritus up in the air, or up in the air, yeah, up in the water column and out of the uh, system. So you don't have to worry about that. But still, even with the amount of flow that I've had in the past in the system, again, this is like our second or third time growing out this reef tank. Um, technically, it's the third, given I re overhauled it one last time. But with that, even when I grew it out the first time, I had to get in there with a power head or the maxi jet and the um, turkey baser to get into those deeper colonies to get that detritus out or again it was going to start to die so with that um, learn from my lesson my tank should be fine or the coral colonies should be fine again they haven't died at this point so they should be good but just get in there when you're doing your water changes get a turkey baser maxi jet extra power head whatever it might be and just blast off your rock structures getting that detritus up and out of the way and you don't have to worry about it settling in there and kind of like suffocating the polyps and eventually killing that part of the coral. So uh, with that, that's pretty much it for the video. Again, it's kind of like a quick look at the 300 and also a little bit of a lesson learned type of video. And you guys tend to like those. So with that being said, uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys later. All right. Peace.